can I do this? No. Dog. Wait, I can't. Why can I not backstab? Wait, wait, wait! Oh, no. All of my the trick stabs are crazy. Oh my god! Get this, get, get, get this fight, get this fight, get this fight! No, yes. no, please! No, stop! No! Why? Good morning and welcome back to the Bread Bowl, the hottest and jazziest live commentary spot on YouTube, where the only rule is that you have to sip a drink with me while you watch. Today, I'm drinking a decaf instant coffee with nothing but a little bit of cream in there. You might think that sounds like it would taste horrible, and it does, but I'm going to drink it anyway. So over this past weekend, I, Breadman, participated in TF Connect, which if you aren't aware, is TF2's biggest yearly charity event. It's basically a giant live stream, one hosted by TF2's finest creators, developers, players, and community members. One where we all entertain the masses in an attempt to get them to donate to charity. We play TF2 for a cause, which this year just so happens to be Special Effect, an organization that helps disabled gamers game. They provide and develop special dedicated hardware and software that allows people to interact with games when they ordinarily couldn't. And I want to talk about it. I want to talk about my experience with the event, what went good, what went wrong, what you can do even if you missed the stream, and just the experience as a whole. To start, what I, Breadman, did was partake in the creator's 50v50, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a hundred creators all in one server fighting each other. Which probably would have been crazy and entertaining enough to get people to donate, but our lovely hosts decided that they would take it a step further and enable the Chaos Mod. Which, if you are unfamiliar, makes it so that every time somebody donates to the stream, my life gets harder. And how it gets harder is anybody's guess. It's the chaos mod, it's chaotic. <laughs> sometimes everybody on the server turns into a skeleton, or sometimes your controls get reversed, or sometimes your camera just falls off your player model, or sometimes you go blind, or sometimes a giant PNG of the heavy just appears in the middle of the screen. Sometimes friendly fire is enabled out of nowhere, right when you're standing in the middle of a group of 20 of your teammates. And those are just some of my personal favorites, some of the more notable ones. That's probably not even a tenth of what could have happened while we were on stream. So not only do we have a hundred different players packed into this one server, not only do we have random effects happening every probably 30 seconds to a minute, but we're also, every single one of us, packed into one single Discord call. It was some of the most chaotic, unbelievably random fun I think I have ever had in my 1600 hours playing this game. I've never actually played on a 50v50 server before, so this was kind of a new experience for me. Uh, just at a base level. <laughs> when they first announced a couple months ago that they were upping the player count from 32 to 100, I kind of looked at that and took a step back and said, nah, nah, I'm okay. I don't, I don't really know that I want a part of that. <laughs> I think my computer might, might catch on fire. It's a little dated. It might, it might blow up if, if that many people were in a single server. So I might, I think I'm going to pass. <laughs> And now I kind of wish that I hadn't passed on that, only because I I just had so much fun doing it now. It's not the kind of fun that I would have ever gotten from a normal match of Team Fortress 2, because it just changed the entire way that I had to play the game. In my head, before the event started, I was going to be the pocket medic, absolutely ubering everybody, the strongest players, everybody I could, making sure that we were going to mow down all 50 players on the enemy team. And I quickly found out that as I played, I, I just never lived long enough to actually get an uber. And also in my head, I was playing the scout, and I was I was flanking, I was running around, getting picks left and right, ooh, because there were so many players and they wouldn't even see me because I was moving so fast, but no, <laughs> playing a class as weak as the scout, you actually can't penetrate the wall of bullets that 50 players will send in your direction literally any time you walk in their line of sight, so that didn't quite work either. 
um as it would turn out there's really no like not even a single viable strategy for trying to to make this game mode and mod work <laughs> i guess what i'm trying to say is that when i say it changes the entire way that i play the game i mean that it reduces it to the simple act of pointing and shooting in a general direction and that kind of just works <laughs> There are so many players that you really don't have to aim. You kind of just have to click and assume that somebody's going to be there. And a surprising amount of the time, you'd be right. <laughs> there, there, there will be somebody there. <laughs> and that's just the gameplay itself. There was also a, a layer of fun in who I was playing with. There's a hundred different YouTubers and streamers in here, all the way from Lazy Purple and Uncle Dane to me, little old bread man just packed into one server fighting with each other, which led to some really cool moments. You know, there was a, about a 15 second period where I got to pocket medic for lazy purple, <laughs> which, which, which doesn't mean anything at all, <coughs> but it happened and that was kind of cool. I think anyway, <laughs> when I was going into it, I had a bit of a hit list of, of different creators I was going to try and get. Um, I think the only couple of people that I really managed to get one in on were probably Skyman Slash, James Ski, uh, <laughs> I think I did get Lazy Purple at one point as well, which, you know, it, it, it doesn't really mean anything. I was just in a server with these people and I got to see their name in my kill feed every now and then, which is like such a nothing experience. But at the same time, it was kind of just like, oh, I, I did that to somebody that I saw on YouTube. <laughs> it was just it was just a whole bunch of fun. I did have a couple of missteps in in the event. The first one being that I was actually going to try and stream the event itself while it was happening to see if I could get my own audience to to donate and watch as it was happening. But I didn't account for the fact that I would be in a Discord call with 99 other people at the time. And I, I, I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to, to stream alone by myself or join in the chaos of the 100 person Discord call. And I did end up deciding to go with the Discord call. However, it took me a good minute to decide. So, you know, if this past weekend you happen to get like eight notifications that I started streaming, just go ahead and ignore those. Let's pretend that didn't happen <laughs> because it didn't. I've never actually streamed before on this channel. We've never been live here before. <laughs> so I I acquired myself a strange bread crab and I named it Breadman's Head, you know, which I thought was fun and a, a little cute. And I was going to make a, a bread bowl titled Donating $1 for every single point I score on TF Connect, which I think could have gone really well, except for a couple minor details that... I, I just didn't care to think about beforehand. The first one was that this is a hundred person server. I knew going into it that sacrifices were going to have to be made so that our computers didn't light themselves on fire as we were playing. I knew that on the server side of things, they were gonna have to disable things. However, somehow nowhere in the days before the stream that I was considering this this charity idea of my own, did I think that cosmetics would be one of the things to go? And that kind of seems like a no-brainer. And it was. Obviously, they had to disable cosmetics to facilitate a hundred people in a 20-year-old game. So I just I just couldn't use it. <laughs> so I just so so nobody was able to see my cosmetic. I couldn't see any of theirs. And not only could they not see it, but it also, it, the server didn't even track any of the points that were scored when I was wearing it. And I was wearing it on every single loadout. I also had to sacrifice every single specifically curated outfit for all of my Team Fortress 2 classes <laughs> because I wanted to put the bread crab on them so I could track my points and donate money and be charitable, but no! I was so excited about the idea that I didn't think that the server just wouldn't have cosmetics on it because why would it have cosmetics on it? 
<laughs> and to be clear, I'm donating money to special effect anyway. I'm upset with myself and also laughing at myself because I had this idea that I thought was going to be super cool and it just, it just could not have gone more wrong. <laughs> and while we're talking about the more charitable part of the stream, because all I've really gone on about is what it was like to play in it, on the more charitable side of things, it was genuinely such a cool experience to be able to just contribute in whatever way I can to help generate money for this charity. The knowledge that anytime something happened that made my life harder in the game was somebody donating to the charity was also super cool because there were different effects going off probably every 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds, which just meant that a lot of people were donating, which I really just, I thought was super cool to see. And it was just a constant reminder of of why I was there, like what I was actually doing here. Like, I'm not just playing TF2, I'm playing TF2 for a cause, which <laughs> like as a statement alone sounds a little silly, but it was super cool being able to be there and, and help get people to donate. And just, I was just so excited to be a part of the stream and be helping out with it. And it wasn't easy being there. Part of the chaos, at least on my end, wasn't just what was happening in game, it was, what was happening in my real life. I had to make a real effort to be able to join the TF Connect stream. In a very rare event of my real day-to-day -day life and my online TF2 life colliding, I actually wasn't able to get out of my day job. What, what ended up happening was I had to get someone to cover two hours of my shift at work so I could <laughs> leave work, literally run home. I ran home from my work. Come play CF2 for like two hours, finish up, run back to work, and it, it was it was 100% worth it. Even though it was a little stressful trying to get <laughs> from work to home to stream, then back to work while on a very tight time schedule, I, I wouldn't have done it any other way because this is something that I was really passionate about and I really wanted to be here and help out and it was just... It was just a wonderful experience overall. I'm really happy it worked out the way that it did and that I ended up going to do it. And as cool as it was being able to help out and get more people to donate in whatever way that I could, there was also a certain level of more personal gratification that came with partaking in the event in that I felt very acknowledged as a creator for I think for the first time. I have been making YouTube videos or just content online for a very long time. And kind of the way that it's always gone is that I'm just alone in my house or in my room or wherever else, just writing scripts, editing videos, posting them just by myself. And it hasn't actually been until pretty recently that I've gotten more than like 10 views per video. <laughs> It, it happened very quickly that I was alone and then I was interacting with people that I had watched for years. And now here I am looking at the TF Connect website and I'm seeing that under the, you know, the list of creators, we've got Uncle Dane, Soundsmith, and me <laughs> in the same list of creators, which is just so unbelievably cool. I'm being lumped in with the same people that I have acknowledged as creators in the past, and that's just been, it's been very cool for me. Like, just being invited to help out alone was amazing. Like, you, you think that I have a notable enough presence in the community that people want will want to come watch me and donate? Like, that's that's super cool. Is I guess my point in bringing all of that up is I have felt so much love and kindness and acknowledgement from this community that it has led me to believe that this is just one of the like greatest communities that anybody could be a part of. And if I can do anything that would help anybody join this community and feel that same kindness and love from everybody, then I would want to do that. 
which is part of why I think it's important to be encouraging as many people as I can to donate to special effect, even if it's just a dollar. And if you can't donate, that's okay too. There's absolutely no pressure. If you want to help out and you can't donate, you could always share links around, encourage people around you to donate. Just do what you can. And I almost forgot while we're all donating, getting out our uh, credit cards, debit cards, why don't we take a look over at the community board, which has been filled with some lovely fan art and other things submitted by all of you in the community. Anyway, I've been rambling for a while now. I guess the, <laughs> the spark notes for this video, TF Connect was a lot of fun. It was super cool being in the event and being acknowledged as a creator in the event. Uh, it was super cool helping people to donate. I'm donating, you should donate. Uh, and, and thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. I, I hope to see you next time.